Welcome back to Kids Club for this week. We're so excited to have you back with us. And we have some extra special things for today. We have our usual songs for today and a Bible story and memory verse, a new one for this week. And we have a very extra special guest to introduce to you. Hello. That's not who I was talking about. Um, hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty great. How are you? Well, I'm doing just great. May I ask who you are? You may. <laughs> who are you? Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, my name is Steve. Steve the Crocodile. You look an awful lot like Allie the Alligator, though. What's... Well, it could... I don't know who that is, but it could be the near family resemblance. Could be. So, what are you doing here today? Well, I was just passing by, heard a lot of commotion, got a little hung, um, sorry, not hung, uh, curious, and then I uh, decided to just pop in and see what was happening. Well, welcome. We're having our kids club right now. You're welcome oh. to join us. Oh, ah. Uh. Are you okay? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I just, I have a perfectly sore tooth. Oh no, that's not good. I did you it is one of my, my back open chomper. Can can you see it right there? Uh I'm not sure. Oh, it's right back there on oh, oh, Here. on the left left hand side. side. I see it. Oh, oh yeah, you see uh it's your right yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> That is terribly rude. Oh. Did you see what he just tried to do? Sorry. Eat guests. Reflexes. He looks so small and juicy. Oh. Well, we do not eat our guests or our little kids. We don't? No, no. They join us for Kids oh. Club and we want to help teach them Bible verses and new songs. We don't want to eat them. But he's so small and juicy. No, he's off limits. Oh, sorry. Well... Oh, I guess I better be passing along then. I thought you were going to join us for Kids Club today. Well, I thought about it, but uh, I saw something small and skinny and bright green with a face on it and it's looks familiar. kind of squishy. And so uh, I, I think I'm going to go see if I can find it again. Okay, well, I guess we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Well, Bye. will Samuel be here next time? Again? What was your name? My name is Steve. Steve, Steve the Crocodile Steve. from Proudly, Australia. Okay. Well, Steve from Australia, the Crocodile. Yes. We'll see you next time. And I don't know if Samuel will be with us or not, but if he is, he's going to stay far away from you. Oh, bummer. All right. I'm going to go look for a small green squishy thing. All right. Say bye, Steve. All right. Bye. Small. It's really familiar, green, <gasps> squishy. I hope he's okay. Well, any, hey. Well, I thought I saw him. I was gonna warn him, but squishy. I don't know. Anyways, this is our special guest that I want to introduce Way to go, you. Way This is Samuel, and he's going to join us ah! at club today. Uh oh, I think we might want to go more in squishy. Squishy, watch out! I don't know that he heard. Anyways, alright, well, we're going to go ahead and get started with our kids club. Hopefully Squishy will be okay. Maybe we'll see Steve a little bit later too. Alright, let's get into our time of songs. We're going to have Brother Steven come in and help us with our songs. Hey bud, you ready? Let's do this thing. We're going to get all loosened up and ready. Alright, gotta shake your hands, get them all shaken out. Shake your legs. Make sure you have plenty of elbow room. Alright, here we go. Alright, so our first song for today has to do with Brother Billy's Bible story that's going to be coming up very soon. And that is a song called Only a Boy Named David. And it tells the story of David and Goliath. And I want you to sing it with me. I'm going to do the hand motions with you. And here's how it goes like this. It goes, Only a boy named David, only a little sling. Only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. 
Only a boy named David, only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David, and five little stones he took. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And one little stone went up in the air. Woot, 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 woot. And the giant came tumbling down. Curse, flop. All right, you got it? I think we're short enough we can do it again. I want you to do the hand motions with me. Here we go. You got it, Samuel? Ready? Here we go. Let's sing it out. Ready? Here we go. Only a boy named David. Only a little sling. Only a boy named David. But he could pray and sing. Only a boy named David. Only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David. And five little stones he took. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And one little stone went up in the air. Woot, 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 woot. And the giant came tumbling down. Curse, blah. All right. Great job, kids. We're going to move on to our second song. All right, as we get ready for this second song, here we go. It's going to do be My God is So Big. There's a couple different verses. We'll do the hand motions together, and it describes how big our God is, how powerful he is. And it, here's how it goes. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Next verse goes, my God is so great. Here we go. My God is so great. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God made the trees, my God made the seas, my God made the elephants too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. For you. All right. Great job. Awesome. Awesome song. Ready for our last one. All right. I love this last song we're going to do because it talks about uh, what it's like when you get saved, when you ask Jesus Christ into your heart uh, and accept him by faith to be your Lord and Savior and what he does with the sin that we have inside of our heart. Sin separates us from God. Sin is anything that we think say or do that breaks God's laws and God has a plan for what to do with that sin when we ask Jesus into our heart to be saved. So this song is called Roll the Way and here's how it goes all right you have to get your fist ready to do this and make a rolling motion like a rolling barrel. Ready here it goes. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. All my sin had to go. Neath the crimson flow. Hallelujah. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Let's try one more time. Here we go. Ready? Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. And all my sin had to go. Neath the crimson flow. Hallelujah. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Awesome, awesome job, kids. Way to go. We're going to get ready. 
for our time of memory verses. I hope you're going to stand up straight, work really hard, get all loosened up, and ready to work really hard on committing God's Word to memory and hiding that verse in your heart. All right, here we go. It's time. We're going to continue on in Psalms chapter 1. And this time we're going to do verse 5. We've already done four verses together. And some of you have worked really hard on saying those verses. And you've said them to me or sent me videos of you saying them. And we've got prizes on the way uh, to do that. So keep working. Even if you haven't gotten them down yet, keep working. And make sure you let me know and we'll get a prize to you. But we're going to do Psalms 1 verse 5. You can look at it. Uh, but here's how it goes. It's very short. And there's a couple of hand motions to help us. Some of them are hand motions we've already done. And it goes like this. It goes... Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. I want you to do judgment like a, a judge banging his gaffle, like saying guilty or case dismissed. All right, in the judgment. All right, try that again. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Then it goes, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Righteous is good. All right, uh, righteous be good, good living, righteous living. All right, so it goes like this: Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Psalms one five. All right, congregation would be a whole bunch of people. That's why we're doing. It. It's like you're pointing to a bunch of people. All right, let's do the whole thing together. Hand motions. Do the verse reference, the verse, and then where it's found again. Here we go. Psalms, Psalms 1, 5. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Psalms 1, 5. All right. Now, I'm going to try really hard to do it with you. And let's see if we can remember. Let's see if we can do all five verses. That would be crazy, huh? All right, I'm going to try and we'll see if we can remember all the hand motions and see what we can do. Here we go. Blessed is the man. Psalms 1, 1 through 5. Ready? Psalms 1, 1, one through 5. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Now our verse this week. Here we go. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Psalms 1, 1 through 5. Great job, kids. You did so awesome. High fives all around. Here we go. High five. Oh, you're sucking on your fingers. Slobber, high five. <laughs> Slobber, high five. High fives all around. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Great job. Now we're going to do one more thing to help us get ready for Brother Billy's lesson. And we have the amazing screen ball. All right. So basically, remember how it works. The one with the ball leaves my hand. You get to scream as loud as you possibly want. And this is to help you get all your noise out before the Bible lesson because you don't want to be distracted. You don't want to be talking, making noise during the Bible lesson. You want to pay attention. So we got to get all the noise out right now, okay? Here's how it goes. Ready? Watch me very closely. Don't get tricked. Only when it leaves my hand. Ready? Set. Ah! One more time. Ah! And. Oh, who screamed? More ready? Set. And, ah, one more time, ah, all right, great job, awesome. Now, once you get your Bibles ready, once you get sit down, ready where you're not going to move around a lot, don't get distracted, uh, get ready for Brother Billy's Bible lesson, I want you to pay very close attention, because I'm going to have questions for you at the end, and I want you to see if you can answer all of them 100% correct, all right, so pay very close attention, and let's get ready to get into God's Word and learn about the life of David. 
All right, kids, we are back again. It's another week for story time. Last week, we stopped off and Goliath was on the right side of the mountain. And the Israelites were on the left side. And they were speaking back and forth to each other. Now, I'm sure you were listening good. I'm sure that you, you understood everything and that you remember everything we talked about. So you remember who Goliath fought for. Goliath fought for Israel's enemy. And their name was the Philistines. The Philistines. And so you got the Philistines on the right side, the Israelites on the left. Goliath is saying, is there not a man among you that will fight me? Whoever wins the battle, if we win, then you become our slaves. If, if, if you win, then we become your slaves. And so all of this is happening. The battle's ensuing. The sun is blazing. It's getting hot. And we went down and we talked about how the Israelites and still the king at the time, the king's name was Saul. And King Saul and all of them were afraid. Um, we, we got that from the Bible in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel 17. So get your mom, get your dad, uh, get your dog, Cooper. He doesn't look like he's going to want to help me right now. But whoever it is, get your sister, your brother, tell them to help you open your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now, we don't just just look at these stories and, and just and just tell you uh, how we think it went down or how we might have, have thought that the action took place. What we know is we know that we have God's word right here, the word that God has given us. And that word is true. And that word tells us everything that happened that we need to know in this situation. And so if you got your Bibles, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and what we were talking about is that Saul was afraid. Look down at verse 11. It says, when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. You remember what we talked about last week? We said the Philistines, they worshipped a statue. They worshipped a statue. They worshipped a little G-O-D. You see, we worship a capital G-O-D, which is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creation, creator of the universe, the creator of you and me. That's who we worship. That's who we love. That's who we give our lives to and our honor to and our respect to and our prayer to. That's who we worship. But we talked about that the, the Philistines, they would worship a statue. Now, this statue was a weird-looking statue. We talked about what it looked like. Do you remember what we talked about? It was a head of a fish and the body of a man. And they worship this statue. Remember, I, I took I took my little Georgia bulldog here. I said, "This is what this is what they would worship. Something something like this, but to be much bigger. And it can't it can't it can't hear me. It it doesn't say anything. If I tell it to sit, it doesn't even sit. If I tell Cooper to sit, he sits. He just cocked his head and was like, "What you talking about me?" But my point is." is that they worshipped a statue while Saul and the Israelites worshipped the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The people that should be afraid right now are the Philistines. The people that shouldn't be afraid are the people who have God on their side. But yet verse 11 tells us that Saul and all of Israel were afraid. So they were afraid. So we get down to verse 12, and it says, Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judea, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul's. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the name of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, his firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shema. And David was the youngest and the three eldest followed Saul. So here they go. The Israelites are going into battle. They're going to this mountain. Goliath is on the other side, and they're afraid. 
David's three brothers, three of David's brothers. David has seven brothers. There's eight kids. David is the youngest. Three of David's brothers go to meet Goliath, and they go with Saul. Verse 15 tells us, But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. You see, David was a shepherd. He watched over his sheep. He protected them from lions and bears and tigers and anything that, that they might might kill the sheep and take them from. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. So for 40 days, Goliath over here would scream over the Israelites and say, Hey, is there not a man that'll fight me? Is there not a man that'll fight me? And he mocked the God of Israel. He mocked our Lord and Savior. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. So David's watching the sheep. David's protecting the sheep. And his dad says, Hey, your brothers are out there and they're, they're, they're fighting. They're, they're getting ready to fight and they've got to be hungry. There's, there's something that's out there that, 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 that causes a person to, to need a, a great physical activity that they need nutrition. And he says, son, go out there and bring David, some David's brothers, some food. So David being the obedient, obedient son that he is, uh, he also, David's dad, Jesse also says in verse 18, carry these 10 cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Now, verse 19, now Saul and they, and all the men of Israel were in the Valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. Okay, so here's the mountain, here's the mountain, and there's a valley in between. And in that valley, they're fighting the Philistines. They, they, they're not fighting Goliath. No man was wanting to take, take on Goliath, but they're fighting the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. So David gets there early morning. He gets up, he leaves, and he does everything his dad tells him to do. So he gets up, he leaves, and he goes up, and he's getting there right when they're getting out of their trenches. A trench is a hole dug in the, in, in the ground. It would be a long, kind of like tunnel, but there's no, no, no top to it. So it's just a ditch. It's kind of like a ditch, and they're in the ditch, and they're, they're waiting to go to battle. And it says, for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. They said, you know what? We're, we're not going to do man versus man. Your, your man is so much bigger than ours that, that we're not taking that challenge. But we will fight you army versus army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. And spake according to them the same words, and David heard them. So just like every other day for the past 40 days, the Bible tells us that as soon as David got there, guess what happened? Goliath came out and said, is there not a man who will fight me? And you know what he starts doing? You know what Goliath starts doing? He starts making fun of God. He starts mocking God. He starts saying, who is this God that protects you? He can't do that. He can't do that. He can't help you right now. Nothing's going to help you right now because I'm big and I'm strong. And all the men of Israel, verse 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Israel's scared. This giant is so big. This giant is so strong. And they're so little and so weak compared to him. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. So then the men of Israel said, Do you see this guy? Do you know that King Saul says, If anybody will fight this guy and beat him, that the king will give you riches. He'll give you, he'll give you his daughter to marry. He'll make you part of the royal family. 
He says he'll do all this stuff if all you have to do is beat Goliath. And David, verse 26, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David said, Who is this guy? Who is this guy that he should mock and make fun of our God? Who is this guy? Who does he think he is? Why are y'all letting him get away with this? This man is literally making fun of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our God, the creator of the universe. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. David says this to the men, and the men are like, this is what it is. If you, if you kill Goliath, this is it. And David's like, who is this guy that, that, that he should make fun of our God? David's brother hears it. David's brother Eliab says, what are you doing here? Why are you here? You shouldn't be here. Who's watching the sheep? All you did was come in here so you could see the battle. I know you. I know your heart. I know that, that you don't have the right intentions. David's brother thought that David was doing all the wrong things. But in actuality, remember, he had left his sheep for someone else to watch. Someone was watching his sheep. He had done everything that his dad had asked him to do. You see, if if it would have already happened, David would have been David would have been still watching the sheep. But his dad came up and says, Hey, your brothers need some food. Your brothers need some cheese. Your brother needs some bread. Take your brother some nutrition so they'll be able to fight. His brother was mad. It said that that his anger was kindled against David. But 20, verse 29, and David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Basically, he says, I've done nothing wrong. He, could, he was like, what are you doing? This man is making fun of our God, and you're not doing anything. Why haven't you done anything? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner, and the people answered again after the former manner. He kept asking him, why, why are you letting Goliath make fun of our God? Why is Goliath still standing? Why is no one fought this man and why brother have you not done anything verse 31 and when the words were heard which david spake they rehearsed them before saul and he sent for him some of these guys heard what david said and they went up to king saul and said saul there's there's a young boy that, that wants to fight goliath <laughs> we don't know what's wrong with him we don't know why but but he will not let it go, and he wants to fight Goliath. Nobody else wanted to. They were scared. Verse 32, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. He said, Hey, I don't care what they're doing. I don't care that they're scared. I'm not scared. I'll go fight them. Verse 33, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. David says, Saul goes, You're, you're too little. You're, you're too little, David. You're, you're, you're too young. You're, you're, too, you're, you're too weak. This man is a man of war. That's what he does. That's what he has grown to do. That what it is he's, he was raised to do. He's done it forever. You haven't even fought in a battle. You just got here today. And David says, you know what? I'm, I keep my father's sheep. He goes, there was a lion and a bear and all of these, these different animals, these ferocious animals came to eat the sheep and I protected them. I killed the bear. I killed the lion. 
Verse 36, David goes on to say, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Then Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. All right, this is getting good. Most of the time, though, when we hear this story, we always hear about David versus Goliath. David versus the giant. But I want you to pay attention to something real quick. I want you to pay attention to verse 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. I said earlier, oftentimes we hear it's David and Goliath. It's David versus the giant. But kids, I want you to see something here that's very important. You know, it's not David versus Goliath. It's God. It's God versus Goliath. Goliath. God is using David. See, this whole situation sometimes gets 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 lost when we think of a little man versus a big man and and how how what of a miracle it was. But when we look at it in this perspective, in this view, that it's God. It's Almighty God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one that created you and me, the one that created everything. Versus this little man, Goliath. He might be a big man, but to our God, he's puny. He's tiny. Think about this, kids. We're living today in the times of Corona. COVID-19, this virus. And you know what? With the tiniest speck of germ, something that you, you and I couldn't even see with our human eye, that little speck can take down the biggest, most healthiest man, the strongest man you know. It could take him down. But you know what? couldn't take our God down. You see, God is stronger than all of man's strength put together. God is wiser than all of man's wisdom put together. And when we look at this story as it being God versus Goliath, but God is just using David, it gives us a different perspective. You see, Goliath was making fun of Israel's God. They, he, was, he was joking and making fun of God. And David says, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to stand here and let him do that. And because David was willing, God used him. So next, we get to the fight between David and God and Goliath. So, uh, we're going to do that next week. We don't have time. Kids, last thing before I leave you. Can I ask you, is God on your side? Do you have God with you? We've talked about this for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks now. And I want to ask you, is God with you? God used David. God has done many things in my life because one time when I was your age, as a little kid, I came to know Jesus as my personal Savior. And to get God on your side, it's as easy as A, B, and C. I think some of y'all remember, if you remember, say them out loud with me. A, admit that you're a sinner. We all have sinned. We've all done something wrong. That is sin. God cannot stand sin. God cannot even look upon sin. And so, 
we must admit to God, God, I know that I'm a sinner. And then B, say it with me, believe on Jesus Christ. And that is believing that Jesus Christ stood on a cross and died on a cross for our sin because we're all sinners. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. And he died for our sin. So A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe on Jesus Christ and that he died for your sin. And C, confess your sin and ask him to save you. Have you ever done that? Do you have God on your side? Because if you don't have God on your side, doesn't matter how big or small the giant is, you can't win without God. Children, I hope next week you're excited, but more than that, I want to make sure that you have God on your side. If you don't, if you don't know if you have a God on your side, get with your mom or your dad or, or, or your sister or brother and talk with them. I, I urge you today, make sure God is on your side. There's a lot of battles that are coming our way and we need him on our side. I don't know what I would do in my life if he wasn't on my side. I thank the Lord he is. Kids, We'll see you next week. I got Coop over here. We'll see if we can uh, see see if he'll say hello to us. Hello, Cooper. You give me a kiss? Thank you, buddy. Okay. We'll see y'all next week. We love you. Praying for you. Next week, David and Goliath. It's going to be awesome. They're going to fight God and Goliath, not David and Goliath. Remember that. It's God versus Goliath. All right. We'll see y'all next week. Love you. Praying for you. Oh, I put him to sleep. He's yawning over here. Coop, I'm sorry. Okay, he still loves me. All right, see y'all. All righty, kids. I hope you paid very close attention. And man, things are building up. They're getting exciting. Uh, and what a great lesson this week um, about trusting in God, and making sure that he is on your side uh, before you go into battles, before you face uh, giants. And uh, I've got a few questions for you. I hope you paid very close attention. And if you did, uh, you should be able to get these first question right off the bat, okay? Let's see if you can get it. First thing, how many days did Goliath come out and challenge anyone to fight him from the nation of Israel? Brother Billy talked about he would come out every day for how many days and challenge and say, I want somebody to fight me. How many days did he do that? Do you remember? It was 40 days. 40 days. Second question. Here we go. What was David doing at home when his dad came to him with a job? What was he doing? His older brothers were off at war. They were fighting for King Saul. Uh, but his dad came to him at home. And what was David doing? What was the job he was doing at home? He was, he was in charge of doing what? He was watching the sheep. That's right. He took care of the sheep. He was a shepherd. And then, next question. Hopefully you've gotten both correct. Next question, what job did David's dad have him do? When he came to him, he said, David, I have something I need you to do. What was it that he had him do? It was very important. What was the job he asked David to do? Do you remember? He told him, I want you to take food to your brothers. I need you to take food to your brothers and check on them and see how they're doing in battle. And David did that and was obedient to his dad. Next question. Next question, all right? What two animals had God already helped David defeat before he met Goliath? What two animals had David already, or had God already helped David defeat before he met Goliath? When they tried to tell him, David, you can't do this. Saul's too big. He's too scary. David said, but my God already helped me defeat this animal and this animal while I was caring for the sheep. What were the two animals? Do you remember? He helped him defeat a lion and a bear. All right, last question. Very important question for today's lesson. Was it David versus Goliath or God versus Goliath? Was it David that was really going to go fight Goliath or was it God that was going to fight Goliath? Who was it? It was God. That's right. It was God. He used David, but God was the one that was going to battle against Goliath. And you will have to wait until next week. I can't believe we have to wait. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see next week 
uh, what happens between David and Goliath. We're going to have some brand new friends here, uh, and I'm so excited. We'll look forward to seeing you next week at Kids Club.